my dears. Last episode, I mentioned that I would be doing a Q&A, and I received quite a number of wonderful questions. I'm going to do my best to answer as many as I can, so let's get started. Question one is actually two different questions, but I felt like they related enough to combine. What inspired you to start a baking channel? And what inspirations or influences did you have when it comes to creating the character of Buttercup? Such fantastic questions! The development of Buttercup has quite a long history, actually. It all started with my love of music from the 1950s and 60s era. That got me thinking about how fun it would be to have a character from that time period I could dress in cute vintage outfits. I chose a Cocker Spaniel, not only because I love Spaniels so much, but also because they were quite a popular breed during that time period. The idea to make her a baker came a bit later. While the suit was in development, I was brainstorming fun ideas for a possible YouTube channel once she was finished. I have always loved baking and have recently become hooked on watching baking videos on YouTube. I realized I had yet to see a dedicated furry baking show, so it just suddenly clicked that that would be the perfect thing for her to do. Next question. What food or treat would you never cook and or eat? Oh, that's an easy one. Anything with bananas. I hate bananas. I can't stand the smell. I can't stand the taste. I can't stand the texture. I don't even want to be near them. So I do apologize, but there unfortunately will never be any banana themed baked goods on this channel. Have you ever eaten raw cookie dough? If so, what is your favorite type to eat? Well, I certainly can't lie and say I've never snuck some dough on occasion many occasions. However, there are too many risks associated with eating raw cookie dough to recommend this. I do know that everyone loves a good chocolate chip cookie dough, so if you have a hankering, there's a lovely and very safe recipe for edible cookie dough done by Preppy Kitchen, which I'll add the link to check out. What is your favorite general thing to bake? Like cookies, cakes, etc.? Well, I must admit, I really love to bake cookies. It's definitely the most common thing I bake. There are just so many different kinds of cookies, and they are so fun to eat and easy to share. I also got a quite a few requests for more specific baking favorites, so I thought I would go into a little more detail. When I'm not baking cookies, I get a lot of enjoyment out of making layered treats. For instance, my lemon bar recipe that has a base, filling, and icing on top. It's fun to make something that has different elements that come together to form a perfect dessert. Is there any particular recipe that has meaning to you? Well, I have a ginger snap recipe that I have been making for nearly 15 years now, and it is very special to me. I make it around the holidays each year and have become quite well known for it among my friends and family. Next question. What is your favorite dog breed? Oh, that is a hard one. Just kidding. I love spaniels, of course. Cocker spaniels like me are lovely indeed, but my biggest soft spot is for Springer spaniels, in particular, the Welsh Springer spaniels. I have two named Taryn and Flair, which you can see in my video on baking dog biscuits. Is there anything you've wanted to learn how to bake or cook that you've been unable to? Well, it's not exactly that I haven't been able to, but I've always wanted to build up the courage to make macarons. I am quite intimidated by them for some reason. I've watched plenty of tutorials, but they're just so precise and I can't bear the thought of ruining a whole batch of cookies by not getting it quite right. Have you ever thought of live streaming a cooking show? It's something that I have considered, but the logistics would be rather challenging. Unless the recipe is extremely simple, there would unfortunately need to be some magic breaking moments. Yes, it's true. There are many things I can't fully complete with these big old paws, as much as I don't like to admit it. 
So, how did the vet visit go after you ate the chocolate in the one episode? Bring them some of your treats and thanks. Oh yes, the time I ate the chocolate brownies. How embarrassing. Oh, oh no, oh dear me. I just remembered, I'm a dog. Chocolate has poisoned the dogs. Somebody call an ambulance. Oh. Luckily, all was well. My veterinary clinic is fortunate to get to try many of my treats. They are some of my official taste testers for new recipes. What is your favorite chocolate dessert to bake? I quite enjoy making chocolate pudding pies. It's a family tradition to make one each year for Thanksgiving. What is your favorite chocolate dessert to eat? Well, if you could, of course. You know, even putting aside the fact that chocolate can be quite deadly for dogs, I'm actually not a huge chocolate fan myself. Though I have to say, I do enjoy a good brownie. The corner pieces are my favorite. Have you ever wanted to bake those Japanese style pastries you see on news feeds? You know, when you go on social media timeline and you sometimes see these really cool Japanese baked goods that look so amazing, like that jiggly cheesecake or perfectly baked milk bread loaves. I must admit, I guess I'm a bit of a sheltered pup because I had to look this one up. I will say I'm quite intrigued, particularly by that cheesecake. It's not exactly my usual style, but something to look into in the future. Have you ever dropped anything, broken anything with those paws? Oh my, I have dropped things on quite a few occasions for sure. I can have quite the butter fingers. Fortunately, nothing has been broken yet. And the next question, I'm looking for a partial suit sometime in the future. Do you have makers that you suggest? That's very exciting. Partial suits are wonderful. I particularly love the ability to dress them up in fun outfits. There are so, so many good makers out there. It would be hard to recommend one in particular. I have suits from three different makers, made by Mercury, Sarah Cat Fursuits, and Stuffed Panda Creations. And all of them have been wonderful and very professional to work with. My best advice when choosing a maker is to look for reviews and reach out to others who have previously gotten suits from them to see what their experience was like. In the furry fandom, who would you love to collaborate on a baking episode? Oh, there's so many in the fandom that it would be a delight to do a collaboration with. There is one in particular I have in mind, and that is Alan the Cookie Dragon. If you don't know him, he is the most wonderful baker. Seriously, you have got to try his cookies. Not to mention one of the sweetest dragons I know. I do hope in the future when things are better, we can one day do an episode together. When did you start seriously baking? Hmm, that's a tough one to pinpoint. I have always loved baking ever since I was a wee pup. Once I moved out on my own, I began to experiment with baking a lot more, always trying new things. I still wouldn't say I'm a serious baker, to be honest, just a quirky home baker who happens to be a dog. What inspired Buttercup's design? Well, I will give all the credit to Buttercup's beautiful design to my fursuit maker, Stuffed Panda Studios. She was an artistic liberty commission with some loose ideas from me. My concept was for a realistic style Cocker Spaniel with mostly natural coloring, and I also supplied the name Buttercup. From there, Stuffed Panda did the design work, and I just couldn't be happier. Do you enjoy other things other than baking? Oh yes, very many things. One of my biggest passions is doing costuming performance for public events such as local fundraisers and charity events. Sadly, this isn't a thing that can be done in the moment, but I look forward to the day that I can continue such a fun hobby. I also enjoy sculpting and painting from time to time, as well as playing video games when the time allows. What's your most favorite feature of your fursuit do you have? There are so many amazing features to my suit. Suck Panda is such a top-notch maker and included so many wonderful and unique elements. One thing I quite enjoy 
is the use of magnets. I have magnets near each ear so that I might decorate with many different accessories. My lovely tail is also a magnet, which means I can wear it without requiring a belt. Isn't that neat? What is the best kind of cookie? Be honest. Well, of course, cookie preferences are quite a matter of opinion. However, I have recently perfected a recipe which I consider to be my idea of the ultimate cookie. I hope to be able to share it with everyone very soon. If you had limitless skill, resources, and the laws of physics didn't apply, what kind of dream pastry would you make? What a fun question. Gosh, let's see. So, I love the idea of cakes and baked goods that look like other foods. Like, you know, it looks like a spot-on realistic hamburger, but it's actually a cake. It would be so fun to create an entire fancy meal, but actually it's all just sweets and baked goods. Imagine the confusion serving that to somebody. It certainly makes me giggle to think about it. How hard is it to bake in fursuit? Oh my, it is, I dare say, quite challenging, to be perfectly honest. There is the obvious dexterity issue, and let me say, you don't realize how much dexterity is important for a lot of baking, especially when it comes to any goods that are shaped or hand-formed. There's also the limited vision, which can make things challenging especially grabbing needed tools and knowing where everything is. There are definitely certain baked goods that really can't be made while entirely in suit. This is not gonna work in for a suit. Oh boy. And I do have moments of cheating sometimes. My secret is out. If you could travel to any place in the world to learn more about baking, where would that be? Oh, what a fun question. There are so many places that would be wonderful to travel to and learn about all the different styles and techniques for baking. One of my favorite YouTubers is Cupcake Gemma, and she owns a bake shop called Crumbs and Doilies in London. It would be my dream to visit her shop and learn more about how they make all their beautiful baked goods. And, of course, get to try some myself. Yum! How do you clean your hand paws? Definitely the most asked question since I started my baking channel. I actually addressed this in its own video, which I will share the link to. And the last question. Have you ever had a moment when somebody recognized you outside the fandom, such as from these videos or the Lisa Ling documentary? This has indeed happened more than once. For those that might not know, I was featured on an episode of the documentary series, This Is Life with Lisa Ling, with my other suit, Lelia. Since the episode aired, I've actually been recognized at a couple of local charity events, and even once at a trampoline park, believe it or not. I sadly have not had too many chances to take Buttercup here out to any public events so I'm not sure if you should be recognized outside of a furry convention setting. I hope you enjoyed learning a little more about me. I really had a lot of fun answering all of your questions. Let me know in the comments what you thought and share some of your favorite bakes or things you would like to learn. If you like seeing my videos, consider sending some support my way through Patreon or Coffee. I am so grateful for all the amazing supporters that have allowed me to continue bringing everyone these videos. Much love to all of you. Until next time. Mwah!